let's now look at a double bus bar substation. Here's a substation with four bus bars, two incomers and four feeders. Let's now see what protection zones we define for this type of substation. Firstly, let's look at an individual feeder. What are the zones we require? Well, we need the usual feeder protection zone. And in addition, we need a protection zone for bus bar number one and bus bar number two. We therefore need a minimum of three current transformers for this arrangement. Let's now add these zones back onto the main substation. As usual, let's start with the incomer and feeder protection zones. And then show the protection zone for bus bar number one. As we can see, on the bus coupler circuit breakers and bus section circuit breakers, we use the outermost CT so that we can overlap with the protection zone on the adjacent bus bar. Let's now do bus bar number two, bus bar number three, and bus bar number four. As we can see, when all of the zones are added to the substation, every single piece of bus bar and equipment is covered by one of the protection zones. Let's now energize the substation. Let's now add a fault on bus bar number 4, which protection zone will detect the fault? Well, as we can see, the fault is within the protection zone for bus bar number 4. The bus bar protection system operates, tripping all of the circuit breakers connected to the faulted bus bar. We've now cleared the fault from the system. When we have bus bar isolators, the two bus bar zones for each circuit don't normally overlap, as we are choosing one bus bar or the other using the bus bar isolators. The only exception to this is when we're doing an on-load changeover, during which both isolators could be closed. This is fine, because we are basically dealing with one solid bus bar when this is the case. The bus bar zones for each circuit are switched using the isolator contacts, ensuring, of course, that no current transformers are ever open circuited.